The next section is called lentils, trepassione, uh, or trepassion, uh, however you want to pronounce it, it's the French. And um, so we have some double stops coming up. Make sure that you uh, that you know the scale that this is based on, because now we we're back to C minor again. This part here. So it requires more strength to vibrate on that. Just make sure. Uh, so I'll practice on lower string first. Trying to vibrate, or even if you're not vibrating, practice just on one string, fingering both notes. So that's my go-to exercise. Um, then we have a passage coming up. This kind of stuff. So again, go slow. Make sure you know the scale this is based on. We have a B natural and A flat. Then we're gonna shift. It's F natural, really, but sometimes I play F, F sharp. Um, it's very tempting. No, F natural. So, yes, so I'm even have, after all the years I've been playing it, sometimes we alter things as we perform the piece. And sometimes it feels more natural to. To, especially with the grace notes or trills, to add your own little interpretation. And, um, but then I have to ask myself, you know, what was really written? So it is F natural here. And then we go. Uh, so I'm using the bowings that are in the part here. So I go. And then I go to C on the down bow. And we're up on this okay and then we have this little turn which you don't have to measure just have fun with that i make a portamento there i like a lot of portamentos but before you do portamento obviously you have to know where that note is Just find the note first, and then later you can do a portamento. So one thing I want to mention in this piece is uh, when you look at the part, it's very improvisatory. But you have to make sure you know your rhythm. So I've been playing this piece for years and years, so I know what the rhythm is, and I want to line that up uh, with, the, with the pianist. would be good to play it with the pianist. But you can also practice um, with the metronome. You can also some of the scales. Obviously, you cannot uh, put with a metronome, where where there's formata and there's arpeggios and all that. But you could practice it with the metronome if you wish, measuring it, you know, triplets, quadruplets, etc. But there are certain sections where you do need to really feel the rhythm really really well. So like this lento section, you're gonna have to go boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. And there will be rubato there, yes. But make sure you know the relationships between eighth notes and sixteenth notes and dotted, double dotted quarters with sixteenth notes. You need to know that, uh, how it's all organized, and then from there we can get a little freer. So, for example, this section uh, after the uh, after that little tremolo. For example, here we're back to time. It does say appassionato, uh, espressivo, and ritenuto. So, but know that it's a it's eighth note, eighth note. Sorry. Two, one, three. So it was a one, two, three, four, one. So 
you can count like that uh, when you play. Okay, and then this is the fun part coming up with the glissandi. And I play this kind of shaking my hand. I have to get tense to do that. I don't know how other people do it, but... And then... So once you slide down and then you go... Again, there will be some rubato. It says ritenuto, then it says presse to quicken. But you need to know how those sextuplets fit in time without uh, those extra ritenutos. All right. Sorry, this is the slide. Four. So I go one, two, one, two, one, three. I'm on the D string here, like like it's printed in the music. Um, and then I separate. I like to separate these sometimes because that's a very gypsy kind of characteristic. It is uh, says here on the beat. But I have uh, played da -da 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 with the pianist arriving on that last note. So So right now I'm kind of in torn between the two. So you can you can play around with that, listen to some other recordings and decide. You can listen to my recording. I'm trying to remember what I did on that recording. But it will be either before or on the beat. Either one will work as long as you coordinate that with the piano. Um, okay, and then going on, let's do a little bit more. So this is back in tempo. So here, you would want to shift to a fifth position. I mean, uh, this is fourth, so sixth position. So we need that pivot note in order to hit the G. Another third, which again is very high, uh, so you have to practice your thirds apart from this piece, of course. But I would practice on one string. Um, so that's tuned up. Now here, I've noticed that uh, it is marked with accents. I don't play it like that. Um, I do that. And maybe because it happens later, I gravitated toward playing it uh, ricochet like that. So that's one way to do it. You can go, it does say ritenuto, but again, it's um, it's the editors. Um, I'm not sure who, who edited this. There's no name. So your name could be on there. You can You can come up with your own version. And then we have the apostacato. So um, I don't know how many of you are really good at that. I'm kind of decent at that. So, so you can tap your hand. Or some people do it flying staccato a little bit more off the string. But uh, the first thing, of course, you have to make sure that you can play the notes comfortably with the left hand. So. Practice the left hand. So you need to make sure that uh, you have. There's some groupings, right? We have. Um, so that's one group. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So groups of four. F natural. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight groups of four. So um, eight groups of fours, that's 32 notes. So uh, you can organize it in fours, then you can do it eights, eight, eight notes, so it can flow better, right? Uh, and then I love this part.
and you're really high. B, and then G. If you can vibrate, it is pianissimo, but you know it's a gypsy song and it's and it's very exciting, so it doesn't have to be too soft. So I kind of uh, try to I try to play each note for them. Don't do just a glissando, but shake your hand so that it becomes like individual notes a little bit. Um, it makes it more passionate. So here we have fingered all third finger. Uh, I don't do that. Let's see how do them. I do two here. Then I do three. I do two here and then three. So you can break it up as you want. You can do all three. Uh, three just seems like too much for me to have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, eleven, twelve notes just with one finger. So uh, I'm I'm dividing it a little bit like um, that first that first F I play with the second finger. Then I do a second finger here. You can substitute here. Another slide. Another one of those uh, bumpy slides. Make sure your bottom note is correct. And then we have. So that's a chromatic scale. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one. And we finish the phrase with the same pattern we had before. Okay, so this gives us about half of that first section. So um, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you found it helpful and enjoyable. I would like to thank Mississippi Arts Commission for their generous project grant that enabled me to make these videos. Please feel free to make comments, suggestions, and requests for pieces that you would like me to record in the future. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please like, share, and subscribe so we can reach more people. Enjoy the Masterclass series.